In this video we're going to take a look at the WHERE clause. In the previous videos when we were looking at the SQL statement we looked at the WHERE clause as a way of limiting the information that we bring back from the Oracle database. And the most obvious thing that we looked at is the equivalency uh, part of the WHERE clause. And you can see right here where we're checking for job ID is equal to IT programmer. We're certainly not limited to that. There's a lot of different things that we can use in the WHERE clause to make it much more functional for us. And we're going to look at some of those different options that are available to us now. So this is a, an equivalency literal uh, type comparison where we're saying the job ID is equal to IT programmer but some of the other things that we can do, let's take a look at employees and see all the different values. It looks like we have a whole bunch of numeric values here for salary. So we can certainly use the greater than or less than values that go along uh, with the WHERE clause. So instead of saying where job ID is equal to that, we can use something like where salary, let's say, is uh, less than 10,000. And we can execute this command. So we run the script and you can see that we have 88 rows of everybody who um, has a salary that's less than 10,000. If we scroll over to the salary field, we shouldn't see anybody who's over 10,000. And You can see everybody's there. So if we flip that around and say everybody who's greater than 10,000, execute that command again. We're only going to bring back people who have a salary that's greater than 10,000. We can also use this as a, a not equal type of deal. So let's say we have um, we have two people who have a salary of 17,000. So if we bring back and we say everybody whose salary does not equal to 17,000 execute that guy. We see everybody who is associated with it except for those two people who had a, a salary of 17,000. And if we scroll through these numbers really quickly, whoops, we can see that in fact those uh, two people who had 17,000 on the salary have not been brought back. One of the really nice things is when you're comparing, when you're doing a comparison between string values, uh, a lot of times you want to bring back more than one type. So the example that we had before, we said, you know, what's the job ID? We want to see job ID is equal to, you know, the IT programmer. We execute that guy. We see everybody who's back there. But let's say we have three or four departments that we want to bring back information on. So let's look at all of the departments that are up there. We'll just, instead of executing the whole command, we'll just execute that one line. We'll bring back everybody. So we see that, you know, we have a couple of different departments here. Let's say I just want to see the AD, VP, and the IT programmer. Well, under normal circumstances, I would have to write where this and this and this. And, you know, if I have a whole bunch of different criteria, that could really be a pain in the neck in a short period of time. So one of the nice things that I can do is I can use something called in. And I can set up a whole bunch of different values that I want to look at. So maybe I want to see everybody from IT programming. And I want to see everybody who's in the ADVP department. So it's basically saying bring back everybody where the job ID is in these different criteria. And I'm not limited to just two values. You know, maybe I'll pull back uh, the ADVP and the IT programmers and the PU clerks. Purchase, probably purchase clerks. And again, I have to put it in single quotes. Whoops, make sure I spell it right. And I execute this command. And because I have the semicolon there, it's screwing it up again. So let's try it without the semicolon, the whole WHERE clause. And you can see the IT, uh, the job ID that I bring back, I bring back the ADVPs, the IT programmers, and the PU clerks, nobody else. Because I can specify that inside the IN statement. I can also say NOT IN and negate that. So it'll bring back everybody who's not in that group. Query comes back and you can see I have everybody except IT, ADVP, or PU clerk. And you can see, whoops, keeps doing that on me. 
So there's all the different job IDs that are available to me. I'm not limited to one criteria. I don't have to say I just want to look for this one thing. So let's say I want to look for everybody who's got a job IT as IT programmer and I can use the AND command to say AND this other criteria. So uh, I want to find everybody who has a salary that's less than 5000 So there's the three IT programmers who have a salary that's less than 5000 And then I can change that around and say greater than 5000 execute it and there's two employees who are in the IT department who have salaries greater than 5000 We've been using the star command to bring back all the rows. We certainly aren't limited to that also. Maybe I just want to see you know something like last name and hire date. So I can replace the star with the actual columns that I want to see. So just bring back last name and hire date from employees and I probably want to see salary also because that's my criteria. So I can specify exactly what I'm looking for separated by commas and everything that comes before the from keyword it'll execute for me. So now I just bring back the three columns last name, hire date, salary for everybody who's greater than 5,000. If I change it around to less than 5,000, run this guy again. Instead of those two, I get these three. So the end command allows me to set up these really complex uh, ways of querying information out of my database. There's another um, set of keywords that goes along with the WHERE clause, and that's is null. Is null allows me to query on null columns. And null columns confuse a lot of people because they think of it as nothing. So um, why can't you just say when, you know, uh, especially if it's a numeric field, when it equals zero? Well, zero doesn't equal null. Zero and null are two different things. And when it comes to um, numeric representations of zero and null, the big thing to remember is that. Uh, a, an expression like 5 plus 0 is, e is obviously equal to 5. 5 plus null equals null. Nothingness, you can add anything you want to it, you can do anything you want to uh, it numerically, and it's always going to be null. So that's something to consider. So let's take a look at uh, all of the information. So I'm going to go into my employee tables, and you can see that I have a whole bunch of uh, commission percentage here. Some of it is null. Obviously, people who are not salesmen have a commission percent as null, and uh, people who are salesmen have a value in commission percent. So one of the things I can do here is I can say select last name hire from salary employees where commission percent is null. I can't say equal to null. It's not smart enough to do that. I have to say actually is null. And I execute the command, and I'll get everything back for everybody who's uh, not a salesman. So let's change salary to commission percent. Execute that command again. And you can see that everybody here is null. So I can also say is not null. Execute the same command again. Now I get everybody back who has some value in commission percentage. A pre commission percentage could be zero. It isn't in this particular case. As long as there's some value in there, it'll return that information. One of the really powerful things about um, using the WHERE clause is something called a LIKE uh, clause. And the LIKE clause goes along with WHERE that allows me to specify sort of what I'm looking for, but not exactly. So let's say I want to find all of my employees who, whose last name begins with the letter R. So I'm going to specify last name, and instead of using one of the other clauses that we've seen up to this point, like equals or greater than or less than or anything like that, I'm going to use the word like. And when I specify the word like, I'm not going to fill in the exact thing that I'm looking for. I'm just going to put in part of what I'm looking for. So if I want to find everybody who starts, whose last name starts with an R, like this first guy here, this Russell, I can say like R and then use the percent sign to say whatever else follows it. I don't particularly care. So let me wipe all of this out. So I'm going to find all my employees whose last name begins with something like an R. Execute that command. Raj, Raffley, Rogers, Russell. I can bring back all of those different pieces of information. If I want to look in the middle 
of a name. Let's say I want to find every employee that has a PH in the middle of their name. I can specify the percent sign at the beginning and the pH in the middle. So this basically says whatever you're starting with, I don't particularly care, as long as there's a pH somewhere in the middle and I don't particularly care what's at the end, bring back that information for me. So I'll execute this guy and the only guy that has a pH in the middle of his name is Raffaele. So you can find that. One more where clause that I want to show everybody about is something called between. Between is exactly what it sounds like. If I'm looking at a numeric value and I don't want to specify is greater than this, is less than this, I can specify the between, between clause. So let's say I want to see all my employees who have a salary between 10,000 and 12,000. So if I go back to my query here, and it looks like I lost my window. I'm not sure what happened there. So. Let's try to open up. Oh, I moved it down here by accident. Didn't mean to drag it, so let's drag it back up there. So uh, for my employees, if I want to see all of that information, I can select last name and instead of commission percent, let's take a look at the salary to make sure that I'm bringing back the information correctly. And instead of the last name being a string, I want to say salary between 10,000 and 12,000. Execute that guy. And you can see all of the employees that get returned meet that criteria. Everybody who's in between 10,000 and 12,000. So if I change that to 11,000 and 12,000, execute that guy again, comes back. And it's all obviously a smaller set because I've eliminated some people and I can bring back that information. Again, a select statement isn't going to harm anything inside your database, so you can play around with it and get the information that you're really looking for. But there's a lot of really cool things that go along with it. And we're going to look at some of the advanced features of the select statement coming up. But in this video, we really wanted to show uh, all of the different things that you can do with the WHERE clause.